In this video, we are going to take a look at the definition and examples of concave and convex functions. So the definition goes as follows. Let x be a subset of RL and x is a convex set. And we have a function f whose domain is x and whose range is r. Now the function f is a concave function if for all x and y element of x and lambda element of the closed interval 0, 1, the function f evaluated at a linear combination of x and y is greater than or equals to a linear combination of the function f evaluated at x and the function evaluated at y. Conversely, the function f is convex if the function f evaluated at the linear combination is smaller than or equals to the linear combination of the function's evaluation at x and y. So let's take a look at a graphical example to understand what this definition is actually telling us. This is an example of a concave function. So here the x-axis uh, represents our domain x and the y-axis represents our range. So we pick any x and y element of x. So this is, uh, let's pick any x and y. And for this, uh, for the purpose of this illustration, let's pick lambda equals to half. So with this uh, lambda, let's say this is the combination of lambda x and 1 minus lambda y, and let's call this the point set. So this is the equation that we need to validate. If this equation is true, then this function is a concave function. So the first thing is we need to evaluate the function f at this linear combination of x and y. So evaluating the function at this point, this is going to be f of z. Now we need to take a look at what f of x is and f of y is. And then we need to take a linear combination of f of x and f of y. So this straight line represents the all of the possible linear combinations of f of x and f of y, given that lambda is between 0 and 1. And for our given lambda half, uh, for this chosen lambda, this is going to be our relevant point. And we can see that f of z is greater than this linear combination of f of x and f of y. And this is going to be true for all possible lambdas, right? So uh, for every possible lambdas, we are going to have f of z, which is with the, going to be within these two, within this region. And these are going to be the uh, linear combinations of f of x and f of y. And we can see that all of these points are either going to be greater than this combination or equals to if they are at these two points. And hence this is a concave function because it is now following this definition. This is a typical example of a convex function. Now uh, let's pick the same way x and y belongs to x. And this is our linear combination of x and y which we call z. And we evaluate our function at z. So this is f of z. So this is f of x and this is f of y. And this is the this line represents all of the possible combinations of f of x and f of y given lambda is between 0 and 1. And this is our specific combination given this specific value of lambda. And we can see that this point is higher than this point and hence f of z is smaller than the linear combination of f of x and f of y. And this is going to be true for all of the points within this region. And hence we can say that this is a convex function. Finally, uh, to get strict concavity or strict convexity, we just need to replace the weak inequalities in our definitions with strict inequality. And we need to replace the closed interval for the values of lambda with open intervals. And that is going to give us a strictly concave or a strictly convex function.